Hi everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett. Now my favorite statement I've got for teaching is less is more. Now I'm gonna tell you what that means and what it can bring to your game. I'm just gonna get set up and then I'll tell you all about it. Okay everyone, less is more. So like I said, it's my favorite statement in golf because what we need to feel as golfers, we need to feel less effort so something else takes over in speed. So I did a video on this, one of my first ever videos back in the day, I think it was driving and it was the same feeling here. But I'm gonna give you an exercise to improve this less is more feeling. So just to kind of rewind and tell you what it's all about. So golfers that I see struggle with a lot of distance or want to improve their distance and not quite getting it is if I had an arrow drawing that joint out of my body here, the arrow's moving too much, their shoulders, they do a lot with their top half. There's a lot of action going on here. So I see a lot of people kind of putting too much effort into it. So their body's moving a lot, but there's no natural speed down the bottom. And that's important what I say about natural speed. So I can feel this. So the amount of effort I'm putting into the shot, obviously I can, I've got a big awareness of what's going on with my body, but there's not a lot of speed down the bottom. The less is more feeling, I'd like you to reverse that. Because if you're struggling for distance and if, you're, and if you want to improve this natural speed, the order and sequence of your golf swing coming down, I'm going to give you a drill to improve this by the way, is on the way down you want to be able to drop your arms and club down while shifting your weight over and then from here you're looking for this club to have a little bit of angle between your arm and the uh, club shaft with the club still sitting behind you and that's the drop down and shift to the left and then from here you're looking for this club to snap back into the ball and this is what's called matching up. So you can see here, I'm not moving a lot with this body. I'm still moving a little bit, but the most work I'm doing now is getting this circle of this club head back to the ball quickly. I'm not holding on to it. People who struggle, you can see, if I do this slow motion, so I'll do this swing and put a slow motion swing in. So that's quite a lot of effort. All right, I'm not hitting it full out of my body, but there's no speed. That's probably gone 110 yards and I've got a seven iron here. So the opposite to that is getting some speed into the ball, into this hitting area, which is kind of this hitting zone. I always called it kind of hip height to hip height. So you can see what I'm doing there. I'm really snapping and releasing this club back into the ball and the hitting area. So I would recommend doing this without a ball to start with. And you can see here, I'm not really feeling this. All right, I'm moving my hands. From here, it doesn't mean you stop your hands. You're carrying the circle of your hands on, but the most work is done by the releasing of this club back into the ball. You can see here from the front view, I've still got my hands slightly ahead. I'm not just stopping them, but they're carrying on, you see, but this kind of circle is catching up here. So the butt of my club is kind of looking more into my belly, into my left pocket. I'm not looking to hold onto it. And a lot of people who push slice it, have that hold on look and see from the club face is open there. There's too much angle between my right arm there, obviously exaggerated for effect, too much angle between my right arm and the club face and the club shaft, I mean. What you're looking for, you're looking for this angle to get a, more in a straight line. You can see my left arm and club shaft all in one line there. Yes, I'm still kicking and moving my weight off my right foot onto my left, but I'm looking for it to match up here. So what drill can you do to improve that? Well, okay, you can put an impact bag here. Now, these are relatively cheap. I'll put the description below. I, put, I bought this myself on Amazon for 10 pounds or whatever it is. You can use anything, you use a cushion, but obviously you want something a little bit, little bit resistance, but without hurting you. We used to do it with a car tire back in the day. It's pretty loud, that woke the neighbors up, but you don't even have to do it um, hard. So I would say, Get your arms out in front of you, get your elbow touching your belly, get the club back behind you and just hit little release feelings. Now, remember, you're not stopping your hands and just completely taking over. You're still moving your hands towards the target, but at the same time, you can see there, my left wrist is now releasing back into the ball. It's still moving forward, but it's now rotating. So it's doing this little flick move. So you can see the amount of speed I'm doing there and I'm not feeling it. That's the less is more feeling, everyone. So you're doing less, so more can happen down there. And I can create, I haven't got a 
club head speed monitor or whatever here, but I can guess that that club's traveling pretty quickly and I haven't moved one millimeter. That's the less is more. Obviously, when you're layering a swing on top of that, obviously you would like to have a little bit of movement and everything's a blend, remember? We're trying to blend all these ingredients into one recipe. And a lot of people forget about the arms and wrist ingredient. And this is mainly about wrist as well. So we, we've talked a lot about arms, haven't we? And arms are obviously very important, but this is now final wrist step. Really important. You can hear the snap down there, hopefully. So that's obviously difficult to transfer over to a golf swing because we haven't got this here in a golf ball, but I would recommend doing exercises. Just kind of, you know, if you don't want to wake the neighbors up, nice and soft, but you're just practicing, keeping looking back down. You can check if the club's in the right position. Yep, feels good. Snap them in. You can see from the front view, still got my hands moving towards the target, but at the same time, I'm releasing them slow motion. You can see there. I'm releasing that club back into impact. I'm not releasing it over here, I'm releasing it straight. You can see from the behind view, my hands don't go out away from me. They go kind of back down, kind of slightly arcing to the left towards my left foot and the club's back into impact. It's an absolutely beautiful exercise and we're marrying all these little things up. You can see from the behind view there, my shoulders and my torso haven't moved that much. You can make a full backswing if you like, drop it in the slop and hold. And then from here, you can see my left shoulder is not going to move too much, but the main focus now is wrist snap into the ball there. So the next exercise you can do nice and slow, drop it in the slot and kicking through. So you're blending now, you're starting to blend. This is great work away from a golf course, away from practice area. All this stuff is just to kind of get your brain in gear so you can feel the motion because a lot of people that I teach or have taught as well said so they can't feel it well after a few repetitions so I'd get them to do this exercise after a few repetitions you will be able to feel it you've got to make the motion first to be able to feel it so here you can see now I'm making a backswing I'm dropping in the slot whilst putting a little bit of weight off my right leg onto my left and then from here I'm snapping that club back into impact. You can see there my right arm still inside, still underneath my left. It's not now over the top. Back swing, drop down, little bit of weight shift, snap. Back swing, drop down, little bit of weight shift, snap. There you can see that little kind of blending now I'm doing and it's, uh, and it's now your job to do this and increase the speed of it. But in the meantime, I'm keeping my hands nice and light. There's no pressure. Back swing, dropping down. Whilst I'm a little bit of weight shift off my left in, off my right onto my left. And then from here, I introduce that snap. Okay, let's speed that up a little bit. Don't know where Trev's gone. Make sure I don't hit him. So back swing, drop down, kick and release. Drop down, kick and release. So I'm not releasing till I'm kind of halfway down my downswing, everyone, okay? So drop down, snap. You can see my snap is happening at the same time my right knee is kicking in. You don't want to keep your right knee on the floor, everyone, because you'd be behind the ball too much. So this stays nice and still. Less is more, more with the hands and club, less with the body. And, and to give it a little reminder, you can kick your right knee in as well. So there's your blend being able to blend these ingredients up of your golf swing. Now, things like this, this is where it's difficult in golf, because once you layer this onto a swing, so let me just put this out of the way. Okay, once you layer this to a swing with a ball there, you're not gonna feel that. And that's the weird thing about golf, because the speed and the distance comes from stuff you can't feel. And that's really important. I'm gonna say that again. Speed and distance comes from stuff that you can't feel. If you're feeling like you're putting too much effort into it, you're doing it wrong. Okay, so let's work on introducing that feeling to a golf ball. So we're going to do the same thing. Now, obviously, there's no resistance to stop, but we're going to still feel the same thing. But we're going to take it from move this rubbish out of the way. So we're, we're still going to take it from uh, the first exercise. So back swing, drop down. 
little bit of weight shift, but not too much now. Okay, the club behind, it doesn't matter if you hit a rubbish shot here. So remember, we're looking for a snap in, kick off and release. Okay, drop, snap in, kick and release. Remember, I'm not trying to hold this, just gonna let it go. So there is a little bit of difference between if you're an elite player or a pusher or a hooker of the ball. This stays the same, but you might need to feel a slight difference in your release. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So let's just go back onto these, this. So down, snap the hands in, kick the, kick the knee. Oh, look at the, look at the speed. I haven't really moved my body yet. There's obviously a little bit of movement here, 5%. I'm not really feeling that because remember, my hands are connected to my arms, my arms are connected to my shoulders, so it's not going to be completely stationary. There is obviously going to be a natural bit of movement here, and we really need these hands to be still moving forward whilst you snap that back in. So nice and slow. Look, if you really want to take it even slower, you can. It's not about speed now if you're learning. It's about sequence and getting the sequence correct. So you can see from the front view now, from this halfway down position, the sequence now is kicking with my right knee whilst I'm snapping this club back from this position. So if I look down, my hands are above my right toe or just behind it, keeping the club back nice and slow and just let it go. Well, that's a nice little rhyme. Nice and slow and let it go. Okay, backswing, hold. Little bit of weight shift, just 10% now but then we're gonna really do a lot whilst we snap. So speed that up a little bit, beautiful. Okay, and then we can, now it's your job to kind of blend that out without stopping. So what's that little mantra we did when we we're hitting the impact bag? Okay, back swing, drop, weight shift, snap. That felt right out the middle. It's not really a distance exercise just now, it's about a sequence exercise. Down, swing, weight shift, snap. Doesn't have to be perfect, remember? Don't put, don't put your brain into the result. Because if you want perfect result, you're gonna start doing old swing. So remember, we're just building a golf swing here, people. Back swing, drop down, little bit of weight shift, snap. So let's speed it up a little bit. Back swing, drop down, kick in and release. Oh, I really give that a little bit of snap. Okay, so now let's just start building that up. Nice and slow, drop, kick, release. Ooh, that was perfect, that was right out the middle. Really felt a bit of compression there, because remember, compression comes from not holding on like this. Compression comes from keeping your hands moving whilst you're releasing. Remember everyone, releasing is your right palm up if you're right-handed to right palm down, or just say, say right palm kind of facing 45 degrees towards the right uh, the front camera there, and then it now looks towards the target. So it's open, what well, feels open, but it's looking towards me, this palm, and now it's, that palm's still looking towards me, you see, I'm not keeping it open. Because that right hand, if you're right-handed, it's the same with the left. If you're left-handed, you just want to reverse that. But let's say if your majority of people are right-handed, that club face is now mirroring them. My right hand is now mirroring that club face. So whatever my right hand does, the club face is gonna mirror. If I'm slow with the release, guess where the club's gonna look? It's gonna look high and right. So it's really snapping that club back in, really snapping that wrist back in. We're letting it go, back swing, drop down, kick and release. Oh, that was lovely. So if you wanna introduce a bit more draw or stop that slice, that's the exercise for you. Blend in those parts, blend in your swing, build your swing, everyone. It's not about just hitting, you know, thinking of one little small swing thought and you're expecting this big slice or your distance to improve 20 yards in one shot. It can improve, but what you're looking for is improvement and consistency. You're not just looking for a, just hopefully just a little swing thought from the swing thought tree and hopefully it's gonna work. You're building a swing that's gonna give you a little bit more result and consistency, which is the key. That's the key to my teaching, hopefully to give you the ideas that you can keep this consistency and when you're on the golf course, you can teach yourself. Because I'm here to teach you to teach yourself. And the best teacher is strike and the golf ball. It's gonna tell you everything you need to know. Right, so I told you about if you're a pusher and hooker of the ball, it's the same feeling, folks. It's the same feeling of getting this club back into it whilst your hands are moving slightly forward, kicking in, 
but what you need to improve and, in, and introduce, I mean, is a little bit of body turn as well. Remember, you slice as the ball, you keep that as steady as possible. You're just moving this and this, but the drawers of the ball and the hookers of the ball, starting right, want to be able to kind of feel a little bit of body rotation as well. So from the front camera, this exercise is going to look like this. So you're dropping down, you're still doing that same kick and release with your right knee, a bit of weight shift, but at the same time, you're kind of moving your body as well. So you can see now I'm much more open and much more down the target. So that's the ultimate. Remember, that is the ultimate golf swing. But remember, for you guys that are probably slicers and overworkers with the top half, you don't need to feel that. But you pushers of the ball, which are a little bit stationary, probably, especially the elite golfer, they need to feel definitely the same feeling. Snap, bit of weight shift whilst moving your body like that. So from this halfway through position, the butt of the club's now looking into your belly. So everything's matching up. That's what's called matching up in golf. You're matching all these things. Now, sometimes we need to feel exaggeration. So you slicers need to kick, release and hold. You can see I'm not matching up there. The club's now pointing beyond me. So I've over-released it, but that's a feeling. Remember, once you start hitting that golf ball on that first tee, you're going to blend a bit of old swing into it. So hopefully you'll blend a bit of release into your body turn. So remember everyone, less is more when you go and play golf because the stuff that you need to improve and hit the ball further and more consistent and a little bit more compression is stuff that you can't feel. And that's the weird thing about golf. That's why for 70, 100 years, teachers of the game have always said there's too much movement and too much over the top. There's too much over the top because there's too much body involved for the majority of people, especially the slicers and the people that want to introduce more speed and distance to their game. So you're looking for blend, everyone. Make sure I don't hit Trev. You're looking for blend. And that's what these top golfers have you see on TV, the consistent ones. They have a blend of their body, legs, arms and hands. This one's about wrist release. I'll just finish off with a aim stick here. Now, if I, from this position, if I didn't introduce some snap and some wrist, you can't feel, you can't hear any, if I try and go as hard as I can, but if I did this with, re, with wrist now, you can hopefully hear that, hear that swish now. You can see the difference in the speed, difference in the speed. Remember, if you're a pusher of the hooker, you do the same thing, but you introduce some body as well. Okay everyone, thanks everyone for watching and if you got something out of this video please let me know. I'd love to hear your comments, love to hear any reviews, what you've got, if you've tried this and it's working or if you've got a question on it, I'd love to hear from you. So from a very sunny UK actually in this new year, I wish you well and have a great golfing week. From myself and Trev, having a little wonder, we'll see you on the next one. Cheerio!